football in Africa, like in many continents, has always been influenced by politics. Consequently, politicians have come tenaciously to the day following the fallout they read from it. In his book, titled Football, that is Soccer in Africa, Origins, Contributions and Contradictions, Dr. Ayuk Augustine, former player of Kamak Memphis and Cameroon's Junior Lions, throws some light on this trend of thought. Football and politics are so interwoven in Africa. Why do you think that that, that, that trend continues? <laughs> the finger and the nail go together. <laughs> if we look at the case of Cameroon, you know, in the past, every time the national team actually wins, we are guaranteed a public holiday the next day. And uh, politicians, not only in Cameroon, but all over Africa, they have used football as a rallying point to unify their diverse uh, communities. And of course, to align themselves with football greats in their respective countries. And so we tend to find this relationship between administrators. Let me just take a little bit. 1990 is really important because in Cameroon, for example, things were not really going on very, very well politically. But because of the success of uh, the national team, everyone forgot about the political problems, everyone rallied behind Cameroon. So we see this relationship between football and politics, not only in Cameroon, but in Africa. In fact, when I talk to my colleagues in Kenya, the same is true. I talk with colleagues in Uganda, the same is true. You look at the case of Egypt, it is true. So you tend to find this relationship between football and politics in many African countries. Let us go back just a little bit. We remember what happened in 1974 when uh, Zaire, the first African country, uh, country that went and was beaten so badly. When the players came back, they were thrown <laughs> in prison because of poor performance. And so when the national team does very, very well, it is glory for everybody. And when it does very, very bad, oh my goodness, the same is true. Uh, are there, uh, apart from politics, are there any other areas that you have found that are like challenges which affect football in Africa? Um, we tend to find lots and lots of challenges. Number one, we tend to find this issue of club versus country, in which some African players, as we know, we have the issue of foot drain, as you want to call it. Uh, in academics, some people will talk about the brain drain, but in this particular case, we are talking about football, and so we are referring to foot drain, in which talented African players are now moving to Europe. Many of them, their devotion is to their club than to their country. And we tend to find that the level of performance in some African countries is not very, very good because the players do not have the time to blend. If we go back to Cameroon, look at the national team 1981-1982. Eight out of the 11 players from the Cameroon national team actually came from one, one team, Kanom Yaoundé. And these players have played together and they know each other. But today, you tend to find that many of the African players who play in Europe, they have one, two weeks to come together to play, and that chemistry is not there, and the teams are not doing very, very well. From time to time, they do okay, but not very, very well. We tend to have challenges. Corruption is there. Political interference is there. The issue about foreign coaches is really, really a serious, serious issue. And we are really glad that some African countries, the case of Senegal stands out. The case of Cameroon now with uh, Arrigo Besson is another example. If you look at uh, Algeria, you look at um, Egypt in the past before even the Nations Cup, they all had uh, uh, local coaches and these local coaches did very, very well. I am personally happy that we have a Cameroonian as a coach. The only problem is Every time a foreign coach does very, very badly and that foreign coach is uh, dismissed, another African country will take that coach. But if an African coach does not do very, very well, no other uh, country wants to select that individual. So I think our mindset needs to change. 
Would you say, Doc, that football has had some impact on African countries out of politics, out of other, other, other dynamics? Would you say football has had some positive impact? Uh, yes. In fact, <clears throat> in the chapter which I talked about uh, football in Cameroon, uh, uh, the good and the bad times, it actually, my experience really talks about the impact of football in Africa, in which obscure countries come to the limelight because of football. In fact, when I went to India um, in uh, 2009, just at the airport, someone looked at my, uh, one of the uh, officials looked at my passport and said, uh, Professor, you are from Cameroon. I said, yes. And he asked, do you know Mila Roger? And I said, yes. He was so happy about it. This just tells you how football actually spans obscure countries to the limelight. And so, yes, Cameroon has succeeded. Ghana has succeeded. Senegal has succeeded. Before the World Cup, many of these countries, if you talk about Cameroon, no, nobody could pinpoint Cameroon. Nobody could pinpoint uh, um, Senegal. But because of their performance, you tend to find that people know about these African countries. And of course, it's great. No, you just mentioned something about the prominence in which football has taken some countries. Um, in the past, in the just past few years, no country can be taken as an underdog in Africa. Here, Rwanda, they come in, Burundi, Lesotho, uh, I mean, and uh, Comoros Islands, and they are making waves even at the level of continental competition. What do you think would be responsible for this upsurge? <laughs> but I'm so happy you asked this question. You know, once upon a time, when you call a country like Burundi, in Cameroon, for example, people will say, how many goals are we going to defeat this country? Sometimes people will say, eight to nothing, five to nothing, 10 to nothing. But today, that is not the case. Look at Cameroon, look at Cape Verde. Cape Verde has given us a lot of trouble. You tend to find Uganda, Uganda is rising. And the reason is, many of these countries, even though they are not doing very, very well, but they also have talented players who are playing abroad. And these individuals, they play in clubs, they know each other. And so they are not afraid of the Cameroons, the Nigeria, the, uh, the Egypt, the Senegal, or even Morocco. So yes, the dynamics have changed because you tend to have players from these countries who are playing abroad as well.